In this section, we'll learn how to create beautiful plots using the package ggplot2 from the tidyverse. So let's open up a new R Markdown file for chapter 3. Let's... Now the libraries that we need to use for this section are tidyverse, and the data skills package. Okay. So first, let's start with loading our data. Create an arrow chunk. Now, the data that we'll be using for most of our examples is a data set that um, comes with the data skills package. So you can load it using data, and it's called pets. So if you run that, you can see up here in your global environment, click on pets, they'll open it in the viewer window. So the pets data set has an ID. Now there's 800 pets in this data set. Um, they're either dogs, well, lots of dogs, cats, or ferrets. Um, each Pet has a country, they're from the UK or the Netherlands. They have a score on some sort of test. Their age in years and weight in kilograms. These data are simulated, they're entirely made up, so they may or may not make any sense. But we can look at these variables. Let's, now the types of graphs that you're going to want to make will depend on what aspects of the data you want to visualize, whether you're wanting to visualize continuous or categorical variables, whether you want to look at um, the values of a continuous variable for each category, or the count, the number of subjects in each category, will determine what types of plots you're going to make. First, we need to learn how to make some of the ba very basic plots. Um, R comes with some plotting functions, helpfully called plot that let you um, make some quick basic plots. So if you type the plot function, then we say x. So our x-axis is going to represent the pet column from pets. So we want to know here we have a categorical variable of pet. And this will default to a visualization that tells us something about that variable. Here it shows us the number, the count, how many dogs are in our data set. It's 400, 300 cats, 100 ferrets. What if we want to um, look at the value of a continuous variable for different categories? We can also use plot for that. Um, along the x-axis, let's visualize something for each level of pet. And along the y-axis, we want this to be the score. So we visualize this continuous variable of score for each category of pet. Plot just knows that you want to do some sort of visualization like this that defaults to a box plot, giving you the median interquartile range and some outliers. It's a great way to quickly visualize your data. You also might want to look at the relationship between two continuous factors. So we can use plot for that as well and say along the x-axis, let's look at pet age. And along the y-axis, let's look at um, pet's weight. Okay. And that gives the plot that shows us here in the simulated data set that as pets age, they tend to increase in weight. It does look like there's an, an upward trend here. So that will default to a scatter plot for two continuous variables. We can also use a different function called hist to create a histogram. Um, so you can visualize a continuous variable all by itself. So if we look at the score, so create a histogram of pet score. 
let's say we want a more fine-grained version of that, we can set breaks equal to 20, and that will give us more bins in our histogram. We could even set breaks to 200 and make a very, very fine-grained one. You need to kind of play around with this visually to see what makes sense for your data. Now, these plots are nice, but they're not visually very stunning, and it's actually quite difficult to get them customized the way you want. Most people who use R will use ggplot2 to create their plots. Now, ggplot2 can seem a little confusing when you start out. But it's um, GG stands for Grammar of Graphics. It's a way to talk about um, plots or graphics in a layered format. So you can talk about different layers of your plot. And you can layer different plot styles or what they call geoms on top of each other. Um, the best way really is to learn by example. So your basic ggplot uses the ggplot function. And if you just run that function with no arguments at all, it will give you just a plain, totally empty plot here. Now, the next thing that we can do is tell ggplot what sort of data are we going to use. We're going to use data from the pets table. And what mapping are we going to use? Now, let's set the mapping to m and define m up here for a second, just so our function doesn't get too complicated looking. The mapping tells us which columns in the table need to be represented by which aspects of the plot. And your mapping is set up by another function. It's the AES function. And we want to tell it here that, say, the x-axis is going to represent pet type. And the y-axis will represent the score. And maybe we want in our plot to have each country plotted in a different color. So we can say color equals country. And maybe we're going to make a, a plot with bars or um, violin shapes that need to be filled in. So the fill is also going to be specific for each country. We'll represent what country they're from also by the fill. So if we run this, just this, now it doesn't quite know yet what, um, what kind of plot you want. Do you want a box plot, a bar chart, a violin plot? We haven't told it yet. So all it can do is set up the axes. We can see it's giving you default values for score that should fit the range of the scores that you have in your data set and all the different categories for pet. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is tell it what sort of um, visualization you want to add. What we call these geoms in ggplot. So let's add in one of my favorite visualizations. And in ggplot, you add them literally with the plus button. So put a plus at the end of this line, skip a line, and type geom violin open and close parentheses because this is a function. Now we can run this. And it gives us violin plots. These are kind of like density plots turned on their side and symmetric. And they the width represents what proportion of the data have that value. Um, but the geoms also take arguments of their own. Let's say we don't want these to be solid colors, but slightly transparent colors. We can tell GM Violin that the alpha property, which controls how transparent the color is, should be 0.5. It defaults to 1, but if we reset it, now we get some transparent violins. You can see through them a bit. Now in ggplot, we can also add other things, and that's what makes this a really powerful way to visualize data. Um, we can add different labels. So say the X label, instead of just defaulting to pet the name of that column, we can give it a more complicated label. Let's call it pet type. And the Y axis is going to be score 
on my on the test. Make sure that's in quotes, comma, and then say for um, color and fill, instead of it just saying country, we can say country of origin. And let's give this plot a title. And the title will be my first plot. So if we run that, ah, we can see there's now two different um, legends, one for country of origin, one with country. So we didn't change the fill as well. Let's change fill to the same thing. And that will condense these two together. Now the fonts look kind of small to me. So you can also do things like change the theme. Let's use a black and white theme instead and make the base size a little bit bigger. So 15 point font. We could make that even bigger. 18 point font. It's a little bit big. Um, but here you can see how ggplot gives us um, straightforward ways to represent how do we want um, our data represented. We can map the different columns to different aspects of the plot. We can add specific types of um, geoms or visualization types. Change the labels, change the theme, and there's many, many other things that you can do with ggplot. In the rest of this lesson, we're going to learn how to make a number of different basic plot types and learn a few more of the um, add-ons that we can use to customize your plot to exactly how you like it.